Hello, my name is Henry Enfrey, and this is a Raylib game development tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to put in enemies and a method for defeating those enemies. Because what good is a game if you don't have enemies and things to defeat inside them, right? So the first thing I did was I defined the amount of enemies that we're going to have in our game. Just for now, just to keep things simple, we're just going to work with just one enemy. You can always go back and redo this method over and over again and, and have more enemies in your game if you want to. Especially if you're a beginner, you can just do these methods over and over again just for practice. And then once you get some of these fundamental things solid, then you can start exploring other methods and make your code more compact and stuff. Okay, so first thing I did was define an enemy amount and we're just going to deal with just one enemy. Okay, so next we set up our enemy. So our enemy is going to be a red square. And in order to get a red square, we have to use the rectangle function. So we used the rectangle function and gave that rectangle a variable name of red. So this will be our square. And in this tutorial, we're going to speak of two different methods for defeating our enemy. One method involves this Boolean variable called active. And this variable is for, let's say, our player blasts the enemy. Well, that bullet will cause this active variable to become false. And then our red square would disappear off screen. So that would be our first method for defeating our enemy. Our second method for defeating our enemy, which is one of my favorite methods, and a method that I use in a lot of my games, is recycling our enemy. And recycling has to do with once our enemy is blasted, our enemy, it'll still disappear, but it will go to another coordinate off screen. And that also will give the appearance of our enemy being defeated. And, and with that method, you know, you can create a whole bunch of enemies and then just keep on recycling enemies like that. I'll show you a little bit more of what I mean later on in this tutorial. And finally, we create a variable for our, our enemy's color. Our enemy's color is going to be red because, again, it's going to be a red square. And then finally, we created a variable name for our enemy. And our variable name is what we'll use to address our square throughout our code. And will be what we use for when we write code for defeating our enemy. And then next, we created a, a variable for our enemy amount. And then... So this is the initialization part. So this is the screen set up for when we launch our game. And one thing I like to do when I create enemies is I like to put all my enemies into a for loop. And this is just my preference. Even though we're just working with just one enemy, I still like to put my enemies into a for loop just in case I want to just create more enemies on screen all at once. Well, all I got to do is just change a variable or change a number or two and then we have more enemies all at once. So that's why I created my for loop beforehand. So, so again, our enemy is going to be a red square. And that red square is going to have a width of 70 and a height of 70. And we set our square to active. Again, it's active for now because our red square hasn't been defeated yet. And again, the square is going to be red. Okay, so here is our enemy's movement. And this section is an example of what we call very basic AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence. <laughs> well, it's not it's not the Terminator or Robocop or Mega Man or nothing like that, but this is just kind of it's kind of the basics of how some of that stuff works, I'd say. AI has to do with if the player does this, then the enemy does that. Or if the player does this, then the enemy does that. And that's kind of how AI works. And this is just very, very basic. Now all we're doing is just getting the square to chase the player. So this says if the player is 
in front of the enemy or on the right side of the enemy, the enemy will go towards the right because of this plus here and this X. Plus X means going to the right. And likewise, if the player is behind the enemy, the enemy will go towards the left direction. X and minus means going to the left in computer programming. Likewise, if the player is below the enemy, then the enemy will go down in the Y direction because Y and plus means go down in computer programming. And finally, if the player is above the enemy, then the enemy will go above because Y and minus means go up in computer programming. And all this is, again, wrapped around your for loop. Make sure you put your I and everything because it's representative of this for loop. This I, see these I's here? It represents this for loop. So make sure you have all these I's and referencing the enemy. Again, our one enemy. So this has to do with when the player shoots at the enemy. Here we got two for loops. One for loop for the shot and one for loop for the enemy. So this first for loop is saying, if any of the player's right foot shot is fired and the bullet is active, for every enemy that it, it collides with, the particular function that we use was this check collision circle rec. So as we remember, our bullets are round and this tracks the position in the round bullet and the enemy is going to be a rectangle. So whenever that collision take place with any enemy or in any bullet, the shot becomes inactive. The shot's lifespan goes to zero, which also means it becomes inactive. And the enemy itself becomes inactive. So, so this is how the bullet colliding with the enemy works. And the same is true with the left work bullet. Here we also got two for loops. If any enemy comes in contact with that shot or collides with that shot, if the bullet is active via collision, that leftward shot becomes inactive or false. The leftward shot's lifespan becomes zero or inactive and the enemy becomes inactive too. Therefore, you will see neither the bullet nor enemy on screen. Okay, and then the last thing we had to do was we just had to draw the enemy on screen via this for loop. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, so so let's test our game and see what happens. Okay, so here's a square. Oh no, our square is coming out through us. So we shoot the square and it disappeared. And that will be it. So that works with the left for bullet. Let's try it with the right for bullet. I'm going to close this and now I test it out with the right for bullet. Okay, square is coming out through us again. And, and as you can see, our uh, platform still works too, see? Maybe we can call this the attack of the shapes or something. Shot it, and it disappeared. Okay, so that works. Now, we just defeated our enemy with this, this active not a, or not active function here. When we shot the enemy, the enemy became inactive. But... There's another way that in which I like to use to defeat the enemy. See, when I make my games, I don't usually like to delete the enemy altogether. I like to recycle my enemies. So I'm just going to comment this part out. And then I'm going to paste in this part here. So now it says whenever we shoot our enemy with a right or a bullet, the enemy is going to disappear and go to the far right of the screen to where you can't see it. It's as if the enemy is gone or something. Maybe we'll make this 1,200 instead. So whenever we shoot our enemy, it'll go 1,200 feet in the in the rightward direction. And that's the way we'll defeat our enemy. And we're going to do the same thing with the leftward bullet. I'm just going to comment this out. And I'm just going to uncomment this part. So if we shoot with the leftward bullet, the enemy is going to go 200 pixels to the left uh, off screen. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, there's that same square. We got our platform. I'm just going to get on the platform. I'm going to blast it. Okay, so now it's going to come back again later. See? 
whenever we shoot, it's, it's like we defeated our enemy. But if you have a lot of these squares, uh, just keep going back to maybe like random places or different places. It'd be like as if the, uh, another square is coming. This is another square and then another square and another square. So this is another method. Let's let's try this again with the rightward bullet. Okay, so we get on this side. Okay, so we shot with the right wood bullet, so it's gonna come back. And thankfully, everything else works. We got, we still got our weather. We we still got our um, platforms working. We still got our grass and background. Okay, so the right wood won't work. So let's see if it comes back. Oh, okay. So that worked too. Good. Okay, so do y'all see what I mean? So in essence, you can take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Go ahead and create some more enemies using the methods that we talked about in here. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. Dude.